to discuss about unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Okay. So, we know that in the previous videos we have discussed about the types of jaundice. That is one is unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and the other one is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So, there are three reasons for unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. First is the increased bilirubin production. That is due to several hemolytic diseases. That is due to excessive red cell destruction, there will be increase in the production of bilirubin. It can be intra or extravascular hemolysis. That is intra means it will be the hemolysis or the breakdown of RBC is happening inside the vessel and extra means it is occurring in liver, spleen, bone marrow, etc. So due to some reasons, due to some diseases, the red cell destruction has become increased here. So due to increased red cell destruction, there is increased production of bilirubin. What kind of bilirubin is produced here? It is unconjugated bilirubin. Okay, so when we call it as hyperbilirubinemia, that is liver has got a certain capacity to conjugate. Suppose liver has got a capacity to conjugate 5 bilirubin, okay. But due to increased red cell production, there will be production of maybe uh, 20 bilirubin. So here the capacity of liver to conjugate the large amount of bilirubin is exceeded. That is, uh, to the maximum there will be, uh, for the liver there will be capacity of 10 bilirubin to get conjugated. Here it has exceeded, here the production is 20. So the liver is not able to conjugate. Okay. Hyperbilirubinemia is develops when the capacity of the liver to conjugate large amount of bilirubin is exceeded. Okay. The next case is icterus neonatorum. That is, in newborn premature infants, the liver will be underdeveloped. So, there will be deficiency of the enzyme necessary for conjugation. But at the same time, there, the rate of red cell destruction is also high. So, this results in icterus neonatorum. That is, jaundice of the newborn. It, it happens or it occurs when there is deficiency of the enzyme for conjugation along with the hemolytic disease. So there is destruction, the red cell destruction is high. Along with that, there is deficiency of the enzyme necessary for conjugation. Okay. So these two conditions results in icterus neonatorum. Uh, the red cell destruction, the hemolytic disease is due to the maternal antibodies. For example, we can consider the case of RH incompatibility. Okay. Then it can lead to kernicterus. Kernicterus means we discussed earlier it is the jaundice of the brain. Kernicterus develops when unconjugated bilirubin level exceeds 20 mg per dl. Now we will discuss the laboratory findings of predominantly unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So the first, as we all know, the first finding will be hyperbilirubinemia. Which one? Unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Next, it will be normal serum level of transaminases, alkaline phosphatases and proteins. These three things will be the normal, will be in the normal serum level. Okay. Transaminases and alkaline phosphatase, they are the enzymes present in the liver. And next finding is acoluric jaundice. That is, acoluric jaundice means it is a jaundice without bile pigments in the urine. That is, urine without any bile pigments. Okay. Why so? Because unconjugated bilirubin is never found in urine. When Even when there is an elevated level of unconjugated bilirubin in circulation, unconjugated bilirubin will not be present in urine because 
it is always bound to albumin. Since it is bound to albumin, it cannot be filtered by kidneys. And also the size of unconjugated bilirubin is high. So it is not dissolvable, it is not dissolvable in water and also it cannot be filtered by kidney. Okay, next is dark colored stool. Dark colored stool is due to increased stercobilinogen release through feces. So there will be presence of dark colored stool. You can see this diagram that is in the uh, in the first portion of the diagram we can see that the bilirubin normal bilirubin pathway here the bilirubin is coming it enters the intestine from there it is getting converted into urobilinogen and it is getting excreted via kidney in the second part we can see that there will be there will be increased bilirubin production so the urobilinogen produced will be increased so there will be increased level of urobilinogen in the urine the next reason for unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia is decreased hepatic uptake here the liver uptake of bilirubin will be decreased thus the dissociation from albumin and binding with glu glutathione as transferase will also be deranged these three these two process will be deranged it can be due to drugs sepsis or prolonged starvation the next reason is decreased bilirubin conjugation this mechanism involves deranged hepatic conjugation here the hepatic conjugation is deranged due to defect or deficiency of the enzyme udp glucuronacyl transferase that is the enzyme needed for conjugation it can occur in hereditary or acquired disorders which are the hereditary disorders they are gilbert's syndrome and krigler najar syndrome or it can be due to acquired defects in its activity example due to drugs hepatitis or cirrhosis so these acquired disorders means they are the hepatocellular damages that is here the cells of the liver is getting damaged the hepatocellular damages causes more excretory problems than its conjugating capacity just two extra points Cholestasis. Cholestasis means accumulation of bile in liver cells and biliary passages. So in cholestasis there will be impaired bile outflow and there will be increase in the level of bilirubin, bile acids and cholesterol. Okay, what is bile canaliculus? It is a thin tube that collects bile from the hepatocytes and it is present between the hepatocytes. This is the bile canaliculus present between the hepatocytes. Next is predominantly conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. It is defined as the failure of normal amount of bile to reach duodenum. Here, Morphologically, the bile is accumulating in liver cells and biliary passages. This defect in excretion can be within the biliary canaliculi or of the hepatocyte and the microscopic bile ducts present within, within it. Intrahepatic cholestasis <clears throat> is also called as medical jaundice. Next is extrahepatic cholestasis or obstructive jaundice it can be due to any mechanical obstruction to the extrahepatic biliary apparatus so it is important to distinguish between extrahepatic and intrahepatic cholestasis as extrahepatic cholestasis 
or obstructive jaundice is often treatable with surgery. By this we are concluding unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. In the next video we will be discussing about the intrahepatic and extrahepatic cholestasis. If you like the video please like, share and subscribe. If you have any comments or any doubts about the topic means you can just mention it in the comment box. Thank you.